Hello there guys, welcome back to another video on a, a miserable grey Saturday afternoon in Manchester. Um, I wanted to go live just to have a quick chat about some news that broke yesterday. I was a little bit late to it but I was a little bit drunk last night, I've been totally honest with you all. Um, but I wanted to talk about Brian Kidd. Uh, Brian Kidd, an absolute legend uh, of Manchester, a, a genuine Mancunian legend, has unfortunately lost, uh, lost, uh, not lost, left Manchester City Football Club after 12 very successful years behind the scenes assisting a whole a glorious host of managers. Uh, so I'm going to chat about that a bit today and what that means and go through some of the news and all that kind of stuff. And I want to say as well... Well, so I will be going live on Twitch after this as well. So you want to have more of a chat, more of an informal chat, I will be live there as well immediately as this video ends. So hello to everyone already joining the chat. Sean, to Rishad, to Seven, to Moni, to SC, to Chris and AJ and everyone else. It's good to see so many people. Don't forget to hit the like button. And don't forget, if you are new to the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button as well. It'd be massively appreciated. But let's talk a little bit Brian, about Brian Kidd. Yep, unfortunately, the legend that is Kiddo, and he's a legend for what it's worth, genuinely legend, has left the club after 12 years. And you cannot underestimate what someone like Brian Kidd leaving means to the people of Manchester City and in general, the people of Manchester. He hasn't retired, which is interesting. He's just decided personally that it's time for a change. Uh, Brian Kidd said... Uh, on his departure. It's been a privilege to be part of such an exciting chapter in the club's history. I can only thank Pep, Roberto and Manuel, which is of course Pep Guardiola, Roberto Mancini and Manuel Pellegrini, the coaches that he uh, worked under, uh, for their leadership during a period of huge change and challenges for everyone involved here. I hope to have offered uh, them enough help and support along the way to have made a difference and played a small role in the different team's successes. Having also played for Manchester City, it was a very special to return and throughout the last 12 years I felt the warmth for the leadership, the staff and of the fans throughout. I'm incredibly grateful to all of them. I would also like to say what an honour it has been to witness the evolution of the club under the stewardship of Sheikh Mansour and the leadership of Khaldun Al Mubarak. I am a Manchester man and the work that has been done to improve the city of Manchester and the local community is fantastic. I wish only the best for Manchester City moving forward, which is wonderful. Which is wonderful. And he's a classy guy, an adorable guy. And a true story, me and Nicola once went round on holiday. Nicola's watching this. Hello to Nicola in the comments. We went once, went round uh, in Rome. There's an old Blue Moon Rising TV challenge with a picture of Brian Kidd. And I can't find the video anywhere, unfortunately. And we got loads of random people in the Colosseum in Rome to de 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 declare their love for Brian Kidd. And it was great. And they were all like, we love Brian Kidd. They had no idea what was going on, but it was wonderful stuff. Uh, and even though it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek, that genuinely it comes from a very warm place. Every club needs that affable guy who's been there, who's been around the scenes, who understands this club and understands the connection to the people of Manchester to, um, to guide the clubs and the new players into that. And people like Brian Kidd are worth their weight in gold. Genuinely, he is a, a classy man, a classy man with experience. And he's that rare kind of person is absolutely loved on both sides of Manchester. Of course, he's worked at Man United, he's played, he's played for Man City, he's coached at Man City and all that kind of stuff. And he's just a great guy, genuinely a great guy. And 12 years and 16 trophies later, that's an incredible legacy at Manchester City. And of course, as a former player as well. Um, what a man. I mean, like, genuinely, the city are less for him not being there. Now, of course, life does move on. You know, he's 72 years old now, so unfortunately... Um you have to just move on at some point in life. But um, we can't deny that his playing career took in United, took in City, of course, and coached at United and coached at Man City. Um, it's impeccable. It's absolutely impeccable. Uh, and he's a hell a hell of a player. A uh, hell of a player when back in his day, he was a hell of a coach as well. Um, and that will be missed, man. You do need that elder statesman kind of vibe around the dressing room. And to be honest, it's for interesting reasons. Um, I remember we talked an awful lot about Bernardo wanting to change. And I've always said that this pandemic might make some players players and people feel unsettled um and it's been proved here unfortunately as well now these are brian kidd quote quotes he said it's been a sobering 18 months you only have to look at the families who have lost loved ones to see that and football has not been the same with the restrictions the time was right to step aside i have nothing but huge gratitude to man city people always try and put two and two together and look for hidden genders but i give you my word there is nothing untoward i've had 12 wonderful years with three great managers and being a local lad it has meant the world to me but recent times have not been the same i'm 72 colin has just passed away which of course colin bell and then there was tony and nobby and so many so a lot of people around his age and Unfortunately, be passing on and what he's trying to say there unfortunately is that um life ain't waiting around um and he's changed his view of the world over the past 18 months and I've, I've been saying this for ages that like you can't we forget sometimes that these people these players these coaches they are human um they are you know fundamentally they are 
care, they care deep down um, about their families and they're affected personally, they're affected emotionally in the way that we are by these things and it doesn't matter how rich and successful they are, but they still every now and then... Um, Every now and then, we'll be upset by these kind of things, and it will change their, you know, their world view. And Brian Kidd fancies a change in life, and that's because, and this is a Mancunian, he wants to fancy a change. That's because life's been so weird, and sometimes you need that to shake yourself out your own personal rut. So we've got a situation here where some players feel this way, and even Brian Kidd does. Even a legend of Manchester feels that way, despite training with some of the best managers in the world and winning trophies. It's not about Man City; it's about life being difficult. And I do not blame him at all for this. So we have to respect his wishes. I mean. I mean, um, obviously, life will go on. You know, 72 years old. Well, we've got... Um, I can't remember. Car yeah, Carlos Vicens, uh, who's done really well... Um I uh, think he was at the under-18s. Uh, he's taken as the assistant. Uh, so he stepped into assistant manager role, which is great. He's got a really good reputation. And of course, once again, that's good for the young, young players because he will be bigging up those younger under-18s players because he's coached with them. Um, it'll, of course, affect the dynamic in the dressing room. But, you know, things change and evolve. And Manchester City have been successful for an awful long time. But we can't pretend that he wasn't that buffer for the new coaches. And he wasn't that guy who understood the Mancunian way. But life doesn't wait for nobody. Um, and... Um, but I'm happy that it's been such a, a, a nice send-off for him. It wasn't sacked at all, Andy. He said himself he decided just to leave because he fancied a change. Pep Guardiola said, Brian Kidd is a legend in this country, not only for what he's done here at Man City, but at other clubs throughout his incredible career. He's been so important to me during my time at the club, and I'm sure to Roberto and Manuel also. He has so much respect in our dressing room for myself, my coaches, and most importantly, the players. His experience has helped us to achieve something very special during his time here, and I speak for everyone at Manchester City when I Thank you for everything he has done. There's no way he's been pushed out or anything like that. He doesn't want to retire. He just wants fancies something new. And I don't blame him at all, man. But obviously, you know, City will be fine. We will carry on winning video, uh, winning games and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course he will. But um, <laughs> Brian Kidd, man, an absolute legend. And he's moved on. I mean, his trophy hall is impressive. Under Mancini, he won an FA Cup, a Premier League, a Community Shield. Under Pellegrini, a Capital One Cup, which is, of course, what we know as the Caraboa. Two two League Cups and a Premier League. And Guardiola, uh, how many League Cups there is it? Four League Cups, a Premier League, a Community Shield, a Premier League, a FA Cup, Community Shield, Premier League. Um, he's had a, a hell of a time, basically. Um it's a shame he's moving on, but I think we have to respect it. Uh, uh, a vastly experienced, very likable man. And one day, hopefully, I get to meet him and go, Brian, you're an absolute legend. And it's hard not to like people like him. Um, he did have a huge impact, Liam. Uh, Liam saying that you'd have to wonder how it affected the backroom staff. We don't know, mate. We don't know, but uh, but as long as, as as long as it's all you know peacefully done, uh, as long as it's all respectful, which it has been, I'm sure, because they love him. Um, you have to respect his wishes. Um, it, it's a shame, but you know, time, you know. They don't wait for nobody, does it, unfortunately? And um, unfortunately for Brian, he's decided he wants to move on. Um, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. But, you know, I can only wish him the best. Uh, an affable... I want to be like... I mean... I... <laughs> I want to be someone like Brian Kidd when I'm old. I want to be that guy that everyone just kind of likes, you know, that can go anywhere and he's just a nice guy that makes everyone feel welcome. Obviously, he won't be a coach, but he's the kind of person you want to be, man. No one's got a bad word to say about him. Just a nice guy. Just a nice guy who's a football, an old school football man who understands, you know, uh, how times change and um, he understands that clubs move on and all that kind of stuff. And he's just a, a top bloke, full stop. I mean, that kind of stuff, it has to matter. It has to matter. And it does matter to me as an individual and as a football fan. Like, you really want to be something like that. Aaron's just said in the comments, it's sad to see Brian Kidd leave, a true servant of Manchester football. Wish him all the best for the future. Indeed, man. He's 72 years old now. And it must be really sobering watching... You know, your friends from that era, the players, your colleagues, all pass away, you know. It must be difficult. It must be difficult. Um, I can't uh, begin to imagine, um, you know, how much it will change your worldview. And right now, I, I respect his decision. You have to respect his decision. Um, a great man has left Manchester City Football Club. All the best, Brian. If you somehow watch us, mate, um, you should be proud of who you are, genuinely. Not many people can unite a city in that same way. And um, that takes a special kind of person. And maybe it's because you just... You're good. Uh, and thank you for the goal that sent United down as well. John Rowling just pointed out. <laughs> Maybe it's just because you're a good guy. You're just a good guy. Um, elsewhere, away from that, I want to talk a little bit about Luis Fiorini. Um, Luis Fiorini is a big man City fan. He's a youngster. was on loan at NEC Breda last year. Fantastic young player. Uh, did really well at NEC Breda. Um, got himself in the Scottish under-21 squad. Big City fan. His family are all big City fans. I've chatted to his dad a few times and all that kind of stuff. And, I've, uh, you know... Um, they're just blues are always around the academy games when I was there. I was always chatting to them and stuff. 
Lewis Fiorini's got a loan to Lincoln City, which is where um, where, where where Morgan Rogers was at last season and did really really well there. And I'm very happy for this loan actually. I think it's actually possibly a bit of a step up. People will say you know it's only League One or whatever, and maybe the, the Dutch tier second tier is higher. I don't think it is actually. I genuinely feel like the second tier of Dutch football um, is possibly not quite. I think this is a bit more of a competitive step up because there's some very good players at that level, don't get me wrong, in the second tier. But there's also a lot of academy sides there because obviously you've got like PSV2 and Ajax2 and all that kind of stuff, which is essentially their youth teams. So in this one, he's going to be playing against League One footballers who there's some serious journey, like journeymen in there, you know, serious like pros in there. And there's also some you know, some very good young players and it's going to be competitive, it's going to be aggressive, it's going to be a lot more physical than that league and we know technically Luis Fiorini is a really good player. If you don't know much about him, I'm not saying he's this level but his game is clearly based as a City fan. You can tell he's clearly based on David Silva and De Bruyne. He has a little bit of those styles kind of mixed in with him. He's got a long way to go to be anywhere near the level of course but he's a very good young talent scorer. He's got a hell of a right foot as well, scored some absolute rockets and I want to see how he gets on next season because I've got an awful lot of hate of him. I really like him. I genuinely really like him. Um, good player Hopefully, I'm going to try and get him on my channel for a chat, actually. Uh, so yeah, that would be nice, because um, it's good to get some of these academy lads on every now and then. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Leo Fiorini, it's a good move for him. Uh, and I think, actually, he'll impress there, because like, they'll go for promotion. You know, they'll go for promotion. They got the playoffs last summer. Um, uh, so that hopefully, you know, uh, with a little bit of luck, he really adapts to that level and impresses people, because he's only 18, I think. Still, is he 18 or 19? Either way, he's very young still. Um, and he's got an awful lot of talent. Did everyone see Gabriel Jesus' red card last night, by the way, as well? <laughs> it was a Nigel de Jong special. A Nigel de Jong special. Absolutely um you got him right in the chest. It was it was a clear, clear red card. Uh, but I wanted to basically do this video and talk a little bit about Brian Kidd. If you guys want to have a little bit more chat, what I will say is go to twitch.tv forward slash esteem company. I'm going to go live over there. I wanted to do this video live and just chat about Brian Kidd because I felt like it'd be a lot easier. A little bit easier to edit if I'm being totally honest with you guys. But also because um, I want to carry on this live chat and get going and I'm carrying over at twitch.tv forward slash esteem company. Um, thoughts on losing Harrison for so cheap? It's a shame, Rashad. I think we've totally underplayed ourselves there um but that's Manchester City with these loan things they never seem to work do they but you know whatever we didn't get it right we didn't get it right but um Either way, good luck to Harrison. I'm not sure he was quite Man City's level, if I'm being totally honest with you. I think he, he's very good, but I do think he's at a slight level below. And to be honest, if we're going to give Harrison a go, I would honestly rather give an academy player a go. I know I know, I, I say that all the time, but I'd rather give... I would also rather play for Ran Torres, if I'm being honest. But very good player. Very good player. Um, but a bit too cheap. But I don't think he's Man City level, personally. Maybe he could have been in time. Who knows? Because he seems to be getting better and better. But, you know, it's a shame that we sold him for the price that we have. Guys, thanks so much for watching this. It was only a short video to chat about Brian Kidd, the legend that definitely uh, deserves our appreciation. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to carry on this chat, go over to my Twitch channel. It'll be in the link in the description. And twitch.tv forward slash esteem company. I'll tweet it out as well. And I'll be there live in like a three or four minutes time as well. So chat to you over there. Go meet me over there. Go meet me over there right now. I'll try and get that going over on that side i get it streaming right away uh so you can meet you straight over there but uh brian kidd man brian kidd uh <laughs> Uh, good luck to you, Brian Kidd. You're an absolute quality player. Jordan Rance, by the way, in the comments saying, Fior Fiorina's path is going to be a bit more of a grind, but he seems like a genuinely good guy. He does. He really does. He's a really, really good guy. He's a high quality, uh, highly, highly talented from football as well. Good luck to the lad. Good luck to the lad. Guys, I'll see you on Twitch in a minute. In a bit. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on Twitch on the other side. Good luck, Brian. Good luck, Brian. I'm going to miss you, man.